Welcome to the Global Discussion, discussions with creatives, leaders and thinkers. Today you're in for a treat. We're joined by Steve Gee. Steve, you're very welcome to the show. Let's begin by asking you to introduce yourself to our worldwide audience. Over to you, Steve. Hi, Simon. Uh, lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, I'm Steve G. I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Blend. Uh, we are an executive membership community for leaders of the largest businesses in the world, um, helping them to embrace this idea of cognitive diversity. How do we find ideas and people who are different from us? Um, which is uh, something I'm sure we'll explore a little bit more today, Simon. That sounds that sounds intriguing already. Um, I'd love to get into that. Before we do, obviously, you you are uh, very much involved in a, as a co-founder and as the CEO. Um, I think you're London, San Francisco, Toronto, New York. You're kind of okay. spreading out the the blend reach across the world here. Um, where did you? Before we get into what blend does. Where did this idea come from? What made you want to get into this type of business? How did that work, Steve? <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, uh, the membership business, uh, as you know, Simon, is a pretty crazy space to be in. <clears throat> um, but an area where you can deliver incredible value, value, value to people. Um, uh, I've spent the last 20 years of my career uh, connecting senior leaders uh, across the world. Um, started out running mobile world congress 20 years ago with uh learning how to run events and bring very senior and exciting people together um uh, right through to running about 3000 events it's a year for the last uh, seven or eight years of my life um which is where my co-founder and i met and, and spent time together and i think uh, having the privilege of listening to and being part of so many conversations with so many leaders over a long period of time um, highlighted to us that there's an opportunity or a gap or a need that, that perhaps we didn't feel that was was quite served. And, and that's this challenge that leaders experience that when they become more senior in their experience, when they've been maybe a uh, an SVP or CMO for a period of time or a CFO, CIO, whatever function it is that you lead, you've spent your entire career becoming a functional expert. You, you know everything it is about how to deliver a marketing function or how to deliver an IT function or, or finance, whatever that might be. Um, and then all of a sudden you're thrown into a boardroom and you're expected to understand everything about every other part of the organization and to be able to lead your function with an understanding of what all the other areas of business do. And in truth, that doesn't happen. And it contributes to this idea of, of um, imposter syndrome that we all talk about and experience in various different degrees. Um, and so this idea that we realized was that, well, all these leaders that we speak to and have spoken to all through our careers often have very similar challenges. And yet they're trying to solve them in extremely different ways, depending on the industry that you're in, depending on the function that you're in, and also depending on the geography that you're in, uh, interestingly, because of the levels of maturity of different markets. So the idea was that how can we connect these people who wouldn't normally get the chance to speak to each other? How do we create a conversation for them that allows them to access more diverse perspectives, knowledge, experience, that changes and challenges them to think differently about about what they're doing today and um, and that's how we built and came up with the idea of blend is to solve that that whole problem yeah and i must say i love i love the name blend i think that that you know spot on couldn't be any better <laughs> and uh i mean it's a it's a topic that i'm very passionate about myself i i was a, the founder of something called the think global forum um and I love the fact that Blend focuses on thought leadership and there's the way you coin it, it's for the forward thinking executive. But coming back to something that you said, um, this sort of unlocking of the um, cognitive diversity, these silos that exist within corporate structures, having served my time and understand a little bit about how large global enterprises work, how these big businesses all fit together. Um, do you find that's that's a big challenge for companies, this sort of silo mentality? Because for years we've talked about the future of work, you know, we've had a pandemic, we're in the world of AI, and yet when it comes to large enterprise, it still seems to be very much a, a challenge that companies are dealing with. You must see that, Steve, right? Yeah, and we see all sorts of different facets of that, Simon. So, yeah, it's a great question. I think... Um... 
large organizations, you know, they're, they're an amalgamation of businesses. Uh, they're disparate. They have global teams with generational divides existing in them. Um, so they have supremely complex challenges to deal with. And, and human nature tells us that to make to simplify things and make them easier, you put people in groups, you put them in silos, you put them in business areas and functions to to make it make sense of that. And, and that's important. That's uh, that's business structure. But by definition, what you then do is you create a siloed approach to managing your business. And, and <clears throat> that is a well-known challenge for organizations. How do we connect our own internal silos, let alone externally, how do we learn and, and develop uh, experience and knowledge from people who are outside of that? So yeah, we see and hear that all the time. I think I was running a, a member meeting in Toronto a few weeks back and um, uh, we had <laughs> two very senior leaders of a, an organization, I won't name them, uh, who were meeting each other for the first time and they've worked in the same building for uh, about three years, um, just because they're in disparate parts of the business doing very different functions. And, and so that, you know, that, that happens everywhere. Um, so yes, for us, breaking those silos in your own organization is important, but, but also the opportunity of doing that beyond your organization is also really exciting. No, that makes a lot of sense. And tell me a little bit more about the membership aspect to it, because there are lots of organizations, you know, of all different quality levels, cost levels, benefit levels. But this membership, um, you kind of tailor it a little bit too, don't you? And there's various benefits to being a member. Could you maybe unpack that a little bit for us? Like, what do people get if they become a member? Are there different types of membership and what's the what's the real advantages? How do they get to to leverage the benefits that Blend bring, Steve? Yeah, good. Thanks, Simon. Um, so <clears throat> I'll, I'll echo back to something that I think you you we touched on just a second ago, which is this. You mentioned post pandemic. This challenge perhaps is 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 different. And I think uh, for us, post pandemic and in the age of AI, uh, I think the the importance of human connection is is never higher um and if i think about a lot of the executives that we speak to they've spent a big chunk of their time remote right and and change and building relationships with people has been pretty hard over the last few years because uh we've all had a lot to get on with and a lot to do and so there's a consistent conversation that we've heard which is i need to get back meeting people but there's also a lot of people who've forgotten how to do that and and to do that at a senior level often is hard and to admit that at a senior level is hard so our membership is all about how do we create a safe space, an environment where our members can come, uh, be introduced to people they've never met, and be introduced to people that they would never normally get the chance to meet. Uh, if I think about, you know, the global chief procurement officer of, of of one huge organization meeting the chief information officer of a huge bank here in London, would never happen. But yet, building those relationships, exchanging ideas and knowledge is what the membership is all about. And the reason I mentioned the, the COVID piece is that that human connection is the basis of, of our membership. So you mentioned the cities that we've launched in so far. So we have physical connections, physical meetings that are happening every month in each of those cities um, that our members get to come and join and be part of those conversations. Um, I'm hosting one tomorrow with uh, Lord Tim Clement Jones, who's the uh, current uh, sitting Lord and talking about AI and ethics and policies, which is quite fun. Um, and then next week, I'm in New York doing something similar with an AI professor of Wharton Business School and, and, and the like. So these conversations are really important because it allows us to stimulate the ideas and thinking that our leaders and members can have, but also to make those connections and those personal friendships that are important because that's how trust is built. That's how uh, how ideas and, and, and that what feels serendipitous, but those uh, those knowledge, uh, valuable knowledge, knowledgeable conversations can be exchanged. Um, and so members get access to our global community. Uh, obviously, most members travel a lot, so they have access to all of the program of physical meetings that we're running in London, New York, San Francisco, Toronto. We're about to launch two new cities next month. And um, and that's important. That's uh, an element of that. But we also then have a lot of resources, education, uh, our book club, our, our master classes, all of these wonderful things um, uh, that exist for our members through our app. Uh, so that we're nudging, supporting, and hopefully challenging them to think a little bit differently about what they're doing. 
Um, and then we run also uh, conversations in the community as well. So uh, that could be on certain themes and topics. So connecting our global members as well, because we've seen a difference in the thinking that exists in each of those cities. And, and it's exciting for our members to be able to uncover that. So a little bit of a waffle, but hopefully gives you some some of the context with what we're doing. And, and we try to build that in a way that it's accessible to all of those SVP uh, C-suite leaders who are in those large enterprises so that they uh it's easy for them to come and join and be feel welcomed and feel part of the, the community. We try and have some fun too, right? It's important to enjoy what you're doing as well. Um, and um, and yeah, we're what a year and a bit into our journey. So we're still relatively young in the process of building, um, but we're excited uh, by what we've we've built and, and then we'll keep this uh, momentum pushing forward, which is exciting. It is exciting. And thanks for sharing that insight, uh, Steve. Um, I want to ask you about the app because you mentioned the app as well as a, and on the face of it, apps seem like a great tool. You've got it in on your smartphone. It's in your pocket. It's in your bag. Um, to connect people globally, of course, but some people struggle with getting traction on the app, you know? So you kind of mentioned you've got these physical in-person events and then you've got the app. I'm just wondering on your experience of the blend app and how that, does that benefit the community? Is that a real growing part of this now? Because some companies, it 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 sort of catches fire and it just it grows and grows and grows. And other companies really struggle to scale their app and to get people to actually use it. Um, no, I'm not I'm not getting into UX and design and the app and all that here. But just like from a top level view, how mm. important is that to your ecosystem at this stage of growth? It's a good question, and um, <clears throat> I think. In the community world, if we think about all the communities around the world and every business on the planet is saying, well, let's build a community of our customers, if nothing more. And then they often build an app for their customers to come and exchange knowledge and ideas. And then they hear crickets because uh, in truth, there's a lot of places for people to go and talk about things. And um, uh, and so creating another one for them doesn't always help. Uh, so we've been extremely mindful about the audience of people that we convene and in being very realistic about what we're asking from them and what we can what value we can bring to them in our in our in our app our app is uh is there to connect our members and to connect the experiences and the value that we bring to them it isn't the value itself and i think that's an important differentiator for us to make um because like our our members are some of the largest and most important leaders of uh, of businesses across the world they're not going to sit in our app for an hour a week they don't have the time so um, our value to them is in short, 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 sharp snippets to give them valuable insights, conversations and connections that uh, that they can derive value from. Uh, we're not aspiring to be the next LinkedIn platform uh, or anything like this, because uh, at the level and leadership that we work with, uh, the value is in the conversations and the people that we make um, connections with. Uh, and the app is a vehicle to helping us do that, as opposed to the core of our value offering, if that makes sense. No, it does make sense. And thanks for putting a bit of light into that, because I know there's quite a few people that, that are part of communities that, that are, you know, watching or listening to this episode. You know, we've got creatives and leaders and thinkers and that sort of core audience. And just interesting to see your perspectives on where the app fits into that ecosystem. So thanks for sharing that, Steve. Now, another thing that I really like about what you say at Blend is that inclusive is the new exclusive, which is a nice play on words. <laughs> but how does that work from your perspective when it comes to building in that thought leadership, building in that diversity? So could you maybe tell us a little bit more about the new exclusive? <laughs> yeah, of course. <clears throat> so, well, thanks for noticing. Um, um, our idea is... Um, Based in this, uh, I suppose the, the core concept of, of Blend is based on the idea of cognitive diversity. Um, and for those who don't know, there's some wonderful literature out there. Um, my personal favorite is, is Rebel Ideas by Matthew Syed, um, um, Matt's um, a friend of the community. <clears throat> and this idea of cognitive diversity is a known idea. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not new. We didn't invent it. But um, one of the things that's really important about uh, this idea of embracing new ideas and be making better decisions, um, particularly when they're, you're challenged with complex problems, is that if you have access to a more diverse set of ideas, experiences, knowledge, perspectives, 
then you're able to um, better solve those problems. You're able to, if I think about just innovation as one area, you know, if you ask 10 people uh, to come up with 10 ideas and they work together in a marketing function, you'd think that they come up with 100 ideas, but, but actually research shows you that they don't. Uh, they actually come up often eight out of 10 times with the same ideas because they experience the same things every day. They've been trained the same things and know the same things. Whereas if you do the same exercise with a, a, a more diverse, cognitively diverse group of people who have different professional experiences, backgrounds, you will ideate and create more ideas. Just a, a, a way of painting the picture. So when we talk about inclusive being the new exclusive, it means inclusive of ideas. It means inclusive of perspectives. It means inclusive of your backgrounds, of your, uh, in fact, everything that makes you special as a human uh, that contributes to your cognitive diversity. Um, and so our membership is specifically targeted to leaders of large enterprise. And provided you are a large enterprise, because that's where cognitive diversity has the biggest impact, the biggest benefit, and we have to start somewhere, um, then you are, uh, and you're in a, a leadership position, then you're welcome to join the community because you will have a perspective and a viewpoint that will challenge that of others and also will bring value to that of others. And so our job uh, in, in curating the community is to ensure that our members as they join us are in a position to do that. And, and they're, they're you know, advocating for bringing ideas, sharing ideas. And this idea of reciprocity is very important that every member joins with ideas and knowledge to share and to gain from others. And, and um, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a picture as to why we talk about this inclusive, because it's not for me to say if somebody uh, is good enough to join the community, that's not my job. My job is to ensure that the value that a member brings to the community is high. Uh, and that they, in turn, that will build and, and continues to build a far more vibrant and active community than uh, than just saying you have the right function or you have the right company or you pay the right money and you can come in. Um, in my view, that that's not uh, conducive to creating a, uh, a community that actually is here to uh, drive outcomes, which is better decision making, happier leaders and, and, and hopefully uh, as a collection of, of members, um, embracing this idea of cognitive diversity and hopefully applying it in their businesses so that they change how they look at maybe diversity in their organizations to think more broadly than just what you look like, maybe a bit more about how you think. I really like what you said there, Stephen. My mind was going to, as, as I'm sure you have the experience of sitting on a board, you know, a board of directors, or even sitting in as a, a non-executive director, uh, where maybe you do also bring some new ideas, maybe there's some elements of governance in there as well and the sounding board elements, but it isn't that full cognitive diversity in the way that you've explained it. And the other thing I really liked about what you said was that, and I know a lot of organisations around the world, I you know, I, I'm familiar with the way a lot of these can and are set up, and some of them... Uh, exactly what you said based on your job title how much money you pay is a large part of the criteria which to some degree can alienate or leave out an important part of that conversation and I'm the question I'm coming to here which I'd love to get your insight in is because executives in today you mentioned you know post-pandemic AI world um, it seems to be busier now than ever right? There's a never-ending inbox. There's a never-ending amount of fires to put out. There's never-ending opportunities to to scale. And with executives being extremely busy, at least in my experience of talking to executives around the world, it seems to be more important now than ever for people to take time out to just have that environment. And maybe that's the secret sauce that Blend brings here, because without that, you you actually become more siloed, even if you're not thinking about it in that context. You must experience that or see that through the the diversity that you bring in those blend meetings, right, and get-togethers. Yeah, we we it's it's so funny that um, often one of the first bits of feedback we'll get from maybe a new member who's come to an experience for the first time is just how cathartic they felt it was. Um, and that they perhaps didn't realize they needed to do it as much as they did, you know, as they, they, once they've experienced it. And I think that sits on both sides 
from a go to market from us. Often we'll speak to leaders who, of course, will tell us they're incredibly busy and, and you know, they don't have time or, or all of these things. And and actually, when you really talk to, to people and understand how to be better at what you do, but also how to feel better about what you do, you know, that that feeling of, you know, we've all got quarter on quarter to chase. We've all got, um, you know, an ever more challenging environment for um, for leaders to be faced with. And, and I think we're about to go through 18, 24, and next five years probably of, of transformation related to AI, which for leaders is, is a really challenging place to be. So creating an environment where you can go and ask sometimes stupid questions that you can't ask in your boardroom meeting, to go and ask questions of functions that you wouldn't normally get the chance to ask, and sometimes to think just completely differently about something. Someone to just challenge you and say, I haven't thought about it that way, or wow, you've applied it that way. That's really interesting. And, and I think of a, a good example, we had um, a CIO and a, a CTO sat next to each other, uh, sorry, CIO and COO, one of a, um, um, uh, one of us with uh, from a food uh, distribution business, uh, one of them from a, a big bank. Both of them couldn't understand why they were sat next to each other when they first came to the session. By the end of it, they are, they're working on a project around customer experience because they're both implementing a similar initiative and, and, and they're doing that. And seeing those sorts of things come to life is so exciting. You know, helping people find new opportunities, exciting. Um, creating friendships with people across uh, industry divides or uh, just seeing that value, those ideas start to spark. And I think that's, uh, I mean, for Jeff and I, you know, I think that's where we see the most enjoyment in, in seeing those magic moments happen. Um, and I don't think that, you know, that's not overly complex. It's just putting the right humans in the right room and having the right conversation. And, and sounds simple. I know it's incredibly hard to do, but um, but that, that's where so much value exists for these guys. And, and I think once they experience it, then committing the time is a lot easier because the value is there. And I think all executives, myself included, I'm sure yourself, Simon, if something is going to pay us back in value, in time, uh, then we'll commit our time to do it. Um, uh, we've all got time. It's just making the time to do the things that, that uh, are actually a higher value for us. Well, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think we often, we're all uh, victims to some degree of getting caught up in the, you know, the urgent stuff, whereas actually it's the important stuff that really moves the needle. Um and carving out that time, as you say, is is often what's required um, to move forward, you know, to make the most productive gains, you know. And the other thing I'd say on that is that, you know, it's it's actually, you know, if I think about most most leaders we speak to, um, you know, they're a product of their own career. So they're, they're mentors, they're advisors, their own uh, places that they go to to get advice is a is a product of their career. It's if I've been in the legal services industry all my life, then. I'm surrounded by people who are from that space and, and that's important, but actually it's then incredibly hard to go and get expertise that's beyond that. And so uh, for a short investment of time and a short investment of money, we're able to you know, fast track that process. And you know, just thinking transactionally about it, that's, that's incredibly valuable in its own space, let alone um, all the other fun things that happen. But, um, but yeah, it, it's an important uh, area to, to explore. No, a hundred percent. And, Last thing on this, because I do want to change gear a little in in a moment with a few other questions. But how important is the virtual environment? I know we talked about the app, and you can push snippets to people, and they can connect with each other, etc. I get that. But is the virtual environment still important to you mm -hmm. at this stage? Because I know you do a lot of physical, but what about virtual is that growing just as quickly or how's that working for you steve yeah our members are meeting multiple times every month for discussions in the in the app uh, virtually and i think that's been really interesting because it's a different flavor of conversation it tends to be um so we'll pick typically topics and themes or it will be more of a um uh a, a kind of a member introduction session so making connections happen more broadly across the community and those it's interesting to see the differences in the different uh, geographies the different cities um in terms of their views and experiences of of those challenges of those areas of business that they're focusing on and, and i think it's been interesting for members again to think more broadly outside of their own uh their own silos it's it's an important part 
and it allows of course when you're incredibly busy members to still stay connected and still be seeing value through right through the the, the course of their you know their annual membership but um i think virtual has definitely changed since post pandemic i think you've got to um you know in the pandemic i was running you know again hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sessions in a, in a previous life and people just craved it because they wanted to talk to other people frankly but we also then got very bored of of being on a on a screen with people i think we've got used to being on a screen with people but i think um building relationships and connections in that way it is different um and so we're quite mindful about how we try to to do that in a in a, a warm and open way um because yeah it, it, we're doing it all day every day so it has to be uh, a little bit special if we can make it so that makes perfect sense. And um, look, when we when we think about where you're at today and when we start to think about where you want to be at tomorrow, you're obviously <laughs> planning to scale yourselves even further. So if I were to ask you the next six, 12 months or even further afield, what does that look like for you and the blend business? How are you going about planning that? What's on your horizon? What's on your roadmap? What are you hoping to achieve, Steve? Good question. Um, so we're founder, uh, founder owned, founder led, um, and that's important to us um, because our rate of growth will be driven by the value that we do deliver for our members. Um, and one of the things over the last 10 years of my life, seeing and working with a lot of VC backed and, and uh, funded organizations is that the chase for growth comes at the cost of what you're able to deliver. And sometimes you miss a step or you can miss a mark in terms of really bedding in value and creating a really solid foundation for, for your organization. So our next 12 months is kind of our focus. And that's really about ensuring that we land fully in each of the cities that we're, we've launched and we will continue to launch in over the next 12 months. Um, and that we focus on member value for each one of our members. You know, our, our number one fundamental aim is for every one of our members to turn around to us at the end of their their year of membership and say i'm proud to be a brand blend member i'm challenged to think differently and find new ideas because i'm a blend member um, i meet new exciting leaders i wouldn't normally get the chance to meet because i'm a blend member and lastly i see huge return on investment from being a member those are the things and questions that we want uh, and I ha we have our whole business focused on answering for our members because the rest will then take care of itself, Simon. And, and you know, it's easy for, for people and, and leaders to sit there and say, my aspiration is, you know, we want to be in a hundred cities or whatever it is, and we want to have X thousand members. In truth, we'll be governed by what the community decides. Um, so if that means we we end up being in 35 cities and, and we have a thousand members in each city, then great. If it's the, actually the best thing for our community is that there's 500 members in each city and, and we're in 15 cities, then great, that's cool too. Um, we have the privilege of of making sure that we uh, follow our market and really listen to what our members want. Um, I think, based on what we've spoken about over the last year, I, I think, yeah, it's very realistic for us to be, you know, um, very excited about what we're building at Blend. Um, and uh, but we're taking steps day by day, week by week, month by month to make sure that we um, we don't run before we walk um, and that we always are focusing on making sure we deliver that value to our members and and anyone, in fact, who interacts with us at Blend. Um, it's important to us that we do it in a friendly and warm way and that uh, and that we do it with kindness um, and, and that we um, we bring people with us in, in positivity and, and all the good things that that we stand for here in, in Blend and um, so I'm excited to see. I think uh, someone asked me a few weeks back again, you know, what would be the headline that you'd want to see in the news in five years' time? Which I think is a pretty challenging question, but uh, I'll share with you my answer because I, I tried to answer it, which is I'd love to have a headline that that says that actually uh, we've created a conversation for leaders that never existed before. And that by doing so, we've changed how these large organizations and these leaders view diversity and that they think about the thoughts that are involved in diversity before they think about all of the more visual or, or, or common ways we think about diversity. I think that would be an amazing thing for us to, to contribute towards. Um, there's a interesting challenge around DEI in America and other parts of the world at the moment. 
And I think that comes from the fact that it's very difficult to link D&I initiatives often to, to profitable revenue growth for companies. And what's exciting, you know, in my view is that cognitive diversity and using it as a lens to have the diversity conversation helps to quantify some of that and make it easier for people who are less accepting maybe of, of d &I initiatives to consider it as a, a valuable approach for your business, for your profitable gains and and and, and all of the good things that, that, of course, shareholders are most worried about. So yeah, sorry, long answer, but hopefully gives you some, some, some of how we're thinking about our next 12 months and our next five years. I think it would make a great headline. And I, I think <laughs> adding that value to the members, uh, I think ultimately, if that's at the core, that's only going to be a good thing that powers it from yeah. here. So thank you for giving us your views on what the, the horizon looks like for you at Blend. Um, I've got two questions to finish up with, Steve, before we wrap up. And number one is, I'm, I'm interested in any final thoughts or anything that maybe we haven't touched on or something you want to double down on. Uh, about blend that we can leave our international audience with so any sort of final thoughts that you'd like to share and the last question as well the second question is if people want to become a member if they want to find out more about all this great work that you're doing how do they go about doing that where's the best place to send people to yeah sure so um I would I'd encourage everyone to, to to come and check us out on our LinkedIn page for Join Blend and www.joinblend.com. Uh, the um, and reach out to me. Come and speak to me directly. We're an open book. Um, the most enjoyable part of my job, Simon, is um, speaking to members and prospective members. I try and carve out as much of my week every week to do that because. Um, a, it's the bit I enjoy the most, and, and B, it, listening and, and having conversations with our members and prospective members is how we will be better at what we do. Um, so uh, as much as I have to do the fun CEO-type activities, uh, I try and prioritize as much as possible that. So, yeah, reach out and come and have a conversation with myself or, or with any of my team. Um, uh, we are, uh, if we're not in your city yet, we probably will be in the not too distant future. So come and talk about how you can come and get involved uh, and help us craft and, and curate what's going to happen in your city. Um, uh, it's it's an exciting time to come and be what, uh, an early move and come and help shape what that looks like. It's been, I know, fun for a lot of our early members in each of the, the founding cities to guide us and steer us to make sure that we're surfacing the best of what happens in each of those cities. So yeah, just come and have a conversation, Simon. A lot of the people who are listening have probably never heard of Blend. So um, just come and uh, be inquisitive and, and explore if you're the sort of leader who wants to uh, find a safe space to come and ask stupid questions, to learn more and challenge yourself. I love Satya Natala's approach. Uh, you know, he was very clear about go from being a know-it-all to get to be a learn-it. And if you're the sort of leader who's on that journey to, to want to learn it all, and I think... My opinion is if you don't embrace that mindset, then you're going to be replaced because I think the biggest thing in the age of AI for leaders is not to know the answers, but to ask the right questions. And uh, and I think that's what I'd leave you with, Simon, is um, come and talk to Blend, come and have a chat with us. Hopefully we'll ask, help you and encourage you to be able to write, ask the right questions as a leader. Well, look. That's a fantastic place for us to end this episode of the Global Discussion. I want to thank everybody who's watching or listening to this episode around the world. Make sure that you follow, like, subscribe, do everything I need you to do to help support the show. And, of course, go and check out all the great work that Steve and the team at Blend are doing. I highly encourage you to do that. And uh, I just want to ask you to join me back here for some more discussions with creatives and leaders and thinkers just like Steve. Thanks, Steve. It's been great to talk to you again today. Thanks, Simon. Thanks for having me. Look forward to speaking again soon.